You don't think that you've got one, it's not something you want to admit to yourself. But the day that I did was the day that things could start to change. Susie'd been doing running and she'd been doing really well and we'd been enjoying the fact she was getting really good at it. But she reached a point where she was going out on runs, almost physically and mentally collapsing and then getting really angry and sobbing at the side of the road. And I realised that actually her mood had changed. She was getting very angry and rather irrational. I was aware that Rosie had decided to change her lifestyle, so she decided to eat more healthily and take up exercise. Um, but as the months went by, it became apparent that it was getting out of control and Rosie was becoming more rigid in her behaviour and in her thought patterns. Self-harm and eating disorders weren't recognised when I was um, 11 and I was very young. I think people didn't expect you to have problems at that age. When I first heard the word anorexia involving me, I just, just, it didn't even occur to me. I thought it was a young girl illness the, where all you had to do was eat food and you'd be fine. The signs are so hard to see early on, I, I think. She became quite manipulative, um, very secretive and quite defensive when I tried to challenge it. It can be very deceiving and you're trying to deceive other people so you're deceiving yourself. A part of me thought it was normal and then it just takes a little step back and it was that mirror moment that was like the click, that was the drop. When mum, and I remember it really distinctly, just looked me in the eyes and said that she couldn't determine whether I lived or died at that point, I could see that it was completely my responsibility. When I wasn't in school and I couldn't do anything, I couldn't meet up with anyone, I realised I had to make a change. Otherwise it was going to be my life for I don't know how long. I kind of possess some kind of belief in myself that I could actually get over it because of a lot of my story with anorexia. It was just trying to cope with it without ever really believing in myself that I could could, that life could be any different. The sooner you can talk to someone, the better. I think that it's not something you can do on your own, but there are people out there who really care and will get alongside you. They can't do it for you, but they will walk alongside you each step of the way. Believe in yourself, you can do something, because no one, no one can help you if you don't want them to help you. We learned things that we didn't know, so I didn't know that the reason Susie was so irrational was because her brain had shrunk. And I think some, when we got into the eating disorder service and we had some of the symptoms explained a bit better, it actually helped Susie and it helped me to understand some of her behaviour she couldn't actually help. It is difficult. It does get worse before it gets better, but if you arm yourself with as much support and information as you can, um, then you're helping yourself and then you're helping your child at the same time. It's only you that can that can do it. <laughs> so you just have to be strong and you just have to keep going and you have bad days and you just need to keep keep strong, keep going. Just taking each minute, hour, day as it comes and keep going, even if it feels worse before it gets better. It's really worth it. It's really worth it to recover and life can be really fun um, when you kind of start to accept yourself.